video clearly. You know what to expect. I don't think I need to explain anything. However, I'm going to because I'm just overly talkative, overanalyze everything, and feel like I need to explain myself all the time. So I will keep the intro super short. Otherwise, just skip ahead if you want to see what the products are. But I'm going to ramble on for a few minutes because it's just what I do. So as you can tell from the title, this is the second favorite vegan products video I have done. The other one I did literally years ago. So if you do want to watch that video, I will link it up here and down in the description if you want to watch. And with that being said too, I do feel like I have to say that I am not vegan. I'm a vegetarian who just happens to enjoy eating a lot of plant-based items. So I don't want to send the wrong message to anyone. I know I make a lot of content using terms like vegan and plant-based and recently I've like gotten in my head about feeling guilty about it because the vegan community can be kind of um, harsh and judgmental sometimes. But really all it is is that I really enjoy a lot of plant-based and vegan items and I incorporate them into my diet every single day. So all the videos that I post about plant-based and vegan items are an accurate description of, you know, what I eat on a regular basis, who I am, products that I buy. So I'm not just like making up these recipes to get the attention of vegans. This is like actually stuff that I eat and I make and I create because I enjoy it and I want to share it with you. Sorry, I know no one asked for that rant, but I just feel like it had to be said because again, I overanalyze everything. <laughs> so I know I said this in my last favorites video and I wanted to say it again here that the things I'm gonna show you aren't things that I eat on a daily basis. One, because they are a lot of the times highly expensive and just not things I wanna spend money on all the time. Okay, I'll shut up now. Let's just get into the exciting part of the video. So the first thing I want to show you guys is probably my most favorite plant-based item as of recently. I'm obsessed with them. So it's these Light Life Smart Tenders. They're pretty much just plant-based chicken tenders. I know these have been on the market for a really long time and I've seen them before, but for some reason I just didn't bother to ever try them until maybe like six months ago or something and now I just can't stop eating them. And there really aren't that many ingredients in these. They're pretty much just made out of wheat gluten and soy protein. Very similar to seitan, but the texture is just so unbelievable. Like when you cook them, it's, you get that like stringy, tender, just chicken texture. I don't know how to explain it. And I know that's not for everyone. I know one of the issues with a lot of the vegan products is that they're like way too similar to actual non-vegan things, which a lot of people don't like, but that is something that I do enjoy because, you know, I get cravings every once in a while, just like everyone else. And that this just satisfies the craving really, really well. In my last favorites video, I talked about the Gardein chicken patties and said that they were the best thing in the world. And these by far like blow those out of the water. Water. If you've been watching my channel for a little bit of time now, then you know that I like to geek out about food and I love nutrition and I love finding new recipes and cooking and baking and everything. So different from my last favorites video, I'm going to be talking about the food a little more in depth just in terms of ingredients and nutrient content and just ways that I use the items. So I guess first, let me show you what they look like, but they are vacuum sealed in a little pouch. I think six tenders come in every single pouch, just like regular seitan or even tempeh too. Like they are a little sticky to them. They are a little moist. They're not just gonna be completely dry and they're very moldable as well. So sometimes if I want to do like wings or something, I'll break them in half and like squish them into more of a wing shape or you can cook them just like this because like this they do, you know, look like chicken tenders as advertised, but they are very malleable and you can pretty much form them to be however you want them to be. So nutritionally, these aren't bad at all. Like I will put this up there with using tempeh or tofu. And this is definitely a protein source that I feel good about eating on a regular basis, if that makes sense. So one serving is three tenders. It's 80 calories, barely any fat, less than one gram, eight grams of carbs, three grams of fiber, no added sugars, obviously, and 14 grams of protein. Then also it's a good source of both iron and potassium and has a little bit of calcium in them as well. These guys are certainly a staple in my diet now. I use them in a lot of different ways. As I mentioned already, I will use them for any sort of like chicken wing. Sometimes I'll just bread them and cook them as like a regular chicken cutlet with a side of vegetables. I'll put them into pastas. I'll put them into salads. You could probably cook them and then shred them to put them into some sort of dip if you wanted, like a casserole or buffalo chicken dip. I'll include pictures of what I've used these for before, as well as with all the other things I'm going to show you. In terms of 
grocery stores. These are probably the easiest thing to find of the stuff I'm going to show you. I have a Super G by me or Giant, so I know that they're definitely there. I've seen them at Acme before. At the co-op I used to work at, we had them there. I'm sure they have them at like Whole Foods. And yeah, this is a pretty normal thing to find at just like your average grocery store, not necessarily a health food store. So very accessible and definitely probably on the cheaper end of the things I'm going to show you today. Up next, we have the Just Egg Frozen egg patties. I don't know if that's what they call them. Folded plant eggs, which honestly doesn't sound much better. And oh my God, you guys, these have satisfied all the cravings that I have for breakfast sandwiches so hard. And I know I said that I'm vegetarian and so technically I can eat eggs, but I do have an egg allergy or intolerance. I'm not really sure what it is, but if I just eat a straight up egg, like my stomach is destroyed for the next couple of hours. So these have been a lifesaver because I really don't miss eggs that much, but something about just like a warm, cheesy, breakfast sandwich on a hot bagel or croissant. I just need it in my life at least like once or twice a month. So that's what I use these for most of the time. I didn't know that these existed for a while because I think it's been a couple of years since Just came out with their like containers of egg that you can um, like pour, it's like liquid that you can pour out and cook it yourself. I have used that before. I find that it tastes a little bit different than these. They don't taste bad. I don't know if I'm just not cooking it right or what. Yeah, I don't know. I prefer to buy these because they're already in the form of using it for a breakfast sandwich anyway. It's really easy to cook. So, you know, if you're using the just egg, a liquid just egg for an omelet or for like some sort of baking dish, which I haven't done before, but I assume you can, you definitely probably want to buy the liquid version, but these are so helpful. The texture is the most egg-like texture I have ever experienced in my entire life. And they just, in my opinion, taste better than the liquid stuff. So each box comes with four little patties. They're individually wrapped. They're so cute, so easy to use. They have like four different instructions of how you can cook them. So you can just put them literally into the toaster, which I know sounds scary, but I've done it and it works. So you can just stick these in the toaster. It's gonna take, you know, maybe like six or eight minutes to cook, but it does cook all the way through. Most of the time I'll either do that and then put it on a skillet or I'll just cook it in the skillet because I wanna melt the cheese on top. So while I'm cooking my like vegan bacon, I'll cook this next to it at the same time, just flip it over. And then when it's close to being done, I'll put on a slice of cheese and cover it and just let it melt. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I use these for, but I think I have used them for, oh, I made a really good breakfast crunch wrap supreme a few months ago that was amazing you could also probably even use these for pad thai or really any other dish where you need some egg so i assume this is the same ingredients as the liquid just egg but i haven't checked if not they're probably similar but it's mostly made out of water and mung bean protein and then a couple other like herbs and spices and everything like that so per serving there are 100 calories seven grams of fat most of which are coming from the poly and mono and saturated fat which are the good fats. Little to no saturated fat in these. There is no cholesterol, unlike real eggs, where there's a ton of cholesterol. Three grams of carbs, no fiber, unfortunately, but there is also seven grams of protein. I can't say it enough. These are just so, so wonderful. And the only downside is I haven't seen them many places. I always have to get these from the co-op that I used to work at. Otherwise, I don't think I've seen them anywhere, but I also haven't been to like Whole Foods or Wegmans in a while. So there's a good chance that like those kind of stores sell these. Otherwise, in regular grocery stores like Acme and Giant, I've only ever seen the liquid containers of it but if you see these i definitely recommend trying them out especially if they're on sale because again good vegan product it's not going to be cheap <laughs> moving on this video is going to be so long i'm so sorry next i have kite hill ranch dressing like what who knew i didn't know until like two weeks ago that this even existed i did talk about this briefly on my last school vlog because i taste tested it on camera and it was absolutely amazing hands down the best vegan ranch i think i've had now that i'm thinking about it i think i've only had two there is the daya one which just like is not ranch so what's the point of comparison and then when just back in the day back in the good old days used to make condiments and ranch was one of them and that one was definitely the closest to real ranch that i've had before but unfortunately ever since they came out with the egg products they don't make their condiments i'm upset about it don't get me started anyway this is very very tasty i found it at a very random grocery store i guess you could call it probably health food store that i've never been to before and i don't even know if i'll ever be there again i would assume you could find this at like a whole foods or a wegmans but i'm not sure i don't even see kite hill products in regular grocery stores unfortunately my giant sold the cream cheese for like a month 
and it was the best month of my life. <laughs> and the co-op I used to work at will occasionally have the cream cheese and sometimes their ricotta, which is also very delicious if you ever get the chance to try it. And I can't show you what it looks like because <laughs> it's empty, I have finished it but it essentially looks like your typical like white, thick, luxurious, like Hidden Valley Ranch. Both the taste and the texture are on point, which is something that I don't think you get with other ranches, like the Dea Ranch, texture-wise, I think it's on point, taste-wise, not at all. And then the Just Ranch, taste-wise was on point, but texture-wise was just like a little too watery. So this is the best of both worlds. And what blows my mind even more is the ingredient list and the nutrition label. So like most of the Keitel products, it's made out of almonds. And then, you know, the usual herbs, spices, and preservatives. Nothing new, nothing bad for you. That's just what's in the product. But two tablespoons is only 30 calories. 30 calories coming from a nut. <laughs> Then there's two grams of fat, two grams of carbs, no fiber or sugars, but that's kind of as expected. And then one gram of protein, again, pretty much as expected. It's a low calorie food. There's not gonna be too many nutrients in it, but like, damn, this is just so good. And I know I said this in the video where I try this for the first time, but what also blows my mind is that if you were to compare this to the like light or fat-free versions of regular ranch dressings, I'm pretty sure that most of them are still like way more than 30 calories. And the ones that do get closer to that 30 calorie mark, they just like the taste gets completely ruined or the texture is weird or like you can just tell that it's a fat-free diet product. Whereas this isn't intended to be like a diety product but it has the nutrition facts label of one, but the taste of a regular one. So this is absolutely amazing. I use it for my wings because I like hot wings and ranch, not really a blue cheese kind of person, or even just dipping veggies into it. You could use it for a salad dressing if that's your thing. I know ranch on pizza is a pretty popular thing, so you could probably try it with that. If you can get your hands on this, do it girl. All right. Two more products. So this should come at no surprise to anyone because I swear to God, I've mentioned this in like four videos recently. So if you're tired of hearing about it, I'm so sorry. But it is the Violife Smoked Provolone Slices. Just like the Smart Tenders I talked about earlier, Violife cheeses have been around for a very long time. And for some reason, it wasn't until recently that I started to try them. And it turns out they're some of the best vegan cheeses I've had. <laughs> the Smoked Provolone, one, it tastes really good. The smoky flavor is just enough, it's not too much. It does definitely have a provolone taste and the texture is honestly what sold me the most. The texture is just so much better than Daya, as are all vegan products. <laughs> better than Daya, better than Follow Your Heart, better than Chow, and I love Chow. So these just, they do it for me. So these I will frequently use for my breakfast sandwiches. I'll melt this on this, use a little of the, oh man, I forget what kind of bacon I use, but I'll try and find a picture of it and show you guys what bacon I really enjoy using. So this is great for breakfast sandwiches. It's great for burgers. It's great for sandwiches. I put it on my BLT in my last video. Oh, and of course I've used it for my mac and cheese a couple of videos ago. I'll link all those down in the description. It's just so good. So these provolone slices are mostly made out of water, coconut oil, and food starch. And then nutritionally, one slice is 60 calories, which I think is pretty similar to a regular slice of provolone or American. There's four and a half grams of fat, most of which is coming from saturated fat, but again, that's normal for cheese. Four grams of carbs and no fiber, sugar, obviously. And there isn't any protein, which I know some vegan cheeses do have a little bit of protein, especially the nut-based ones, but you know, I'm not eating a slice of vegan cheese for the nutritional benefit. I'm doing it for the taste. Oh, I just noticed this though. There is 20% of vitamin B12. I guess they fortify this with B12, but I don't think they advertise that. Oh no, they do. I'm just dumb. <laughs> so these bad boys, again, I find at Giant, and I don't think I've ever really looked anywhere else for them, but because Violife has been around for so long, and I know that they're at Giant, so they're most likely at like Acme's and maybe even Walmart. And then of course your regular health food stores. Last but not least is technically not my favorite product and actually something I've never tried before. <laughs> so my intention was to show you guys the Nadamu birthday cake ice cream because that is one of the best ice creams I've ever had. Dairy, non-dairy, doesn't matter. Nadamu just knows what they're doing, at least for that flavor, because honestly, now, now that I think about it, I'm not sure if I've had any other Nadamu ice creams because once I had the birthday cake flavor one, I just couldn't go back. There's no reason to try a different flavor because if they have the birthday cake one, I'm gonna buy it. So I went to the store earlier today because like all my other products, I want to be able to have the product physically and show it to you guys and talk about it. However, I went to the store and they didn't have it, which is not 
uncommon. That happens a lot. So I don't eat the Natamu ice cream often. One, because I can't find it in a lot of places. And two, it is so terribly expensive. Like one pint of it, I think is $6.99 a giant. Do you know how many tubs of regular ice cream I could get for $6.99? I know non-dairy ice creams tend to be expensive, but like Ben & Jerry's isn't even that expensive. And Ben & Jerry's is really good non-dairy ice cream. So yeah, RIP to my Nadamu birthday cake ice cream endeavors. I literally only buy it when it's on sale, which is like maybe twice a year. And Super G does have it sometimes. And I think the co-op I used to work at had it sometimes. But even other places that sell Nadamu, I very rarely see them have the birthday cake flavor. So. It's it's just, it wasn't meant to be, I guess. But if you can find it, I do recommend at least trying it once. However, then you might be obsessed with it like I am and you're gonna wanna keep buying it, so maybe don't try it. But anyway, that's all just to say, I went to Acme specifically to buy Nadamu ice cream and they didn't have any and I didn't need anything else from the store and I didn't wanna make it a waste of a trip, so I bought a different pint of ice cream. So this is the Open Nature plant-based ice cream. I don't know, I've never heard of this brand before. This was on sale, I think it was on sale for like three bucks or something, which again, for non-dairy ice cream is pretty cheap. So I figured I'm gonna buy a cheap ice cream that I've never had before and try it on camera with you guys for the first time. So this flavor is their blueberry oatmeal crumble. And other than this, the only like vanilla-y fruity one that they had was just plain old vanilla. Everything else was like chocolate fudge or chocolate caramel or brownie chocolate something. So as much as I wanted those because besides the birthday cake ice cream, I really am more of like a chocolate swirl caramel ice cream kind of person. But I figured I should try and get something that's similar to birthday cake, which this really isn't at all similar to birthday cake, but it's not chocolate. So, so like a lot of other non-dairy ice creams, this is oat based I'm sitting on the floor of my room for, you know, like an hour now while I film the rest of the video and got prepped and everything. So it's a little melted. You probably can't see that. It smells really good. It smells very blueberry. -y. Oh yeah, very melted. Yeah, that's pretty good. I was the first one to say that it's super creamy, but I know a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's like half melted, which of course most ice creams are gonna seem a lot creamier than they are when they're half melted. So when it's like still frozen, I'm not sure how it performs. And the way I'm going, I'm not gonna find out what it's like still frozen because I'm on my way to eating the entire thing. It's really good. I would definitely buy this brand again. I definitely wanna try a chocolate one. The blueberry flavor is very good, but I think the oat crumble part is my favorite. I think of the non-dairy ice creams, oat milk based ones are probably my favorite, which I know is hypocritical because I'm pretty sure Nadamu is coconut milk based. So far, I think that's the only coconut milk based ice cream that I really enjoy. The other ones, I forget what brands they are, but the ones that are a little bit cheaper, is it haagen or something? I don't know. But every time I eat them, they're just like, they're not very creamy. They have like an underlying coconut taste to them, which I like coconut, but not when I'm eating something that isn't supposed to be coconut. <laughs> All right, well, that concludes this video. I enjoyed doing that a lot. I know I was all over the place. I definitely want to do more videos like this in the future, which for vegan products specifically is going to be pretty difficult because, you know, they're not coming out with new things all the time. So maybe I'll do like a vegetarian version or like an accidentally vegan version of just some of my favorite foods in general. If that sounds interesting to you, let me know down in the comments. I mean, I'll probably do it anyway. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. It would help my channel out a lot and I would love you forever. I will see you guys next week.